Welcome to Hub Bytes. I'm Sunil Rege, consultant psychiatrist from PsychScene. Today I'll be taking you through the mechanism of action of SNRI. SNRI stands for serotonin noradrenaline reuptake inhibitor. Noradrenaline is also known as norepinephrine. In the prefrontal cortex, which is postulated to be involved in the pathogenesis of depression, there are three key neurotransmitters, noradrenaline, serotonin, and dopamine. What we do know is that from the presynaptic neuron, the neurotransmitter is released, it accumulates in the synaptic cleft, and then binds to the receptors in the postsynaptic neuron, resulting in activation and exerts its effect finally. What we do know is there are proteins known as transporter proteins that take up these neurotransmitters back into the presynaptic neurons where they're broken down. Noradrenaline is broken down by NAT, which is the noradrenaline transporter. Serotonin is the CERT protein, which is serotonin transporter and dopamine is by DAT but you can see here DAT is missing and why is that because in the prefrontal cortex DAT is missing and the work of DAT is done by NAT so the noradrenaline transporter is essentially the protein is the transporter protein that will take up the dopamine into the presynaptic neuron. Dopamine, as we know, is also broken up down by other enzymes such as COMT. What happens when we administer a SNRI? We know that an SNRI, it's a reuptake inhibitor, so it blocks the reuptake of noradrenaline, of serotonin. And the way it does that is by blocking the transporter proteins. So by blocking the CERT, the serotonin transporter protein, there is accumulation of serotonin in the synaptic cleft, allowing for action. By blocking NAT, which is a noradrenaline transporter, there is accumulation of noradrenaline, allowing for the action. The question is, how does an SNRI increase dopamine as well? What happens is, it can be considered as a dual agent where serotonin and noradrenaline are both increased in the synaptic cleft but what happens is the do when the dopamine is released from the presynaptic neuron some of it will be broken down by COMT but dopamine tends to have a larger diffusion radius so when it comes in contact with NAT as well normally it will be taken up by NAT but because it's blocked there is increase of dopamine as well in the synaptic cleft, allowing for a dopamine action on the postsynaptic neuron. So in summary, SNRIs increase noradrenaline, they increase serotonin, but despite not acting directly on the dopamine transporter, they still increase dopamine in the synaptic cleft as blocking NAT increases dopamine. Now let's look at the different kinds of SNRIs. We have duloxetine. Duloxetine is used in pain specifically, such as chronic musculoskeletal conditions, neuropathic pain, fibromyalgia. Of course, they are evidence-based in anxiety disorders as well. Venlafaxine is a dual agent. At doses of 150 or less, they predominantly have a serotonergic effect. Whilst at doses greater than 225 and equal to 225, they tend to act predominantly as a noradrenergic and dopaminergic agent and that's why recommendations are that at doses of 225 and above one should monitor blood pressure as increased noradrenaline and dopamine can be activating. Desvenlafaxine is a metabolite of venlafaxine 
and it tends to have a noradrenergic and dopaminergic effect at the initial dose of 50. The dose goes up to 100 and 150 milligrams. One of the advantages is that it's not broken down by the CYP enzymes in the liver and hence can be used in conditions where liver dysfunction may be an issue. Milnesopran is also a, an agent that is evidence-based in fibromyalgia. Uh, it has a significantly higher noradrenergic action than the other SNRIs and hence can be used in pain conditions such as fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia does have noradrenergic pathways involved in its pathogenesis. Finally, let's look at the side effects. Now we know that SNRIs act on serotonin, noradrenaline, and dopamine. They result in an increase of all three, but it's technically not known as a triple agent such as a tricyclic because it's not directly blocking DAT, but rather indirectly increases dopamine through by blocking NAT. So it can be considered as a two and a half antidepressant in a way. Now, because of the serotonin effect, in many cases, it can result in weight gain. Not in all patients, but many patients can complain of it. Sexual dysfunction, again, because predominantly because of the serotonergic effect on the 5-HT2C receptor activation. A CNS effect is linked to the activation and the agitation phenomenon due to increased noradrenaline and dopamine. Therefore, when an SNRI is started, it's important to look out for a significant insomnia, significant agitation, increase in anxiety that does not settle down, racing thoughts, etc. Anticholinergic side effects such as dry mouth, constipation, urinary retention can be an issue with SNRIs. And finally, GI distress, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, something to look out for. So in summary, SNRIs increase serotonin, noradrenaline, and partly dopamine. They are agents that can be used in depression and anxiety, but have particular benefit also in pain conditions. So duloxetine and milnasopran are prescribed in conditions such as fibromyalgia. In terms of side effects, they have side effects similar to SSRIs, but one has to be vigilant for activation phenomena greater than that of SSRIs because of the noradrenaline dopaminergic effect. They also have greater anticholinergic side effects that clinicians should be mindful of. So I hope that you found this summary useful. See you on another Hub Bites. Take care and stay safe.